Good afternoon, viewers. I'm talking about investments as investors education program. In fact, this presentation is in continuation of my earlier lecture on 10th March. Some of the things I have discussed there, I may be just touching upon in this presentation because of positive time. Long term investing, a good habit, is growing from the concept that we should keep on investing our money, a part of our money. In fact, in old days time, I used to hear from my forefathers, my grandmother, my elder people used to talk about that whatever earning you have, part of it should go for charity, part of it should go for savings and investments, while only a part of it should be spent on day-to-day -day basis. This is thing is from the fact that could be unforeseen circumstances. There could be situations where you may need money. It could be medical, it could be children education, it could be children marriages or an unknown requirement. And hence you should have savings, you have investments which can become handy at that point of time. Investment is a very personal subject. Investment pattern for every person is different because a lot depends on the earning capabilities and need of money by people. Every person will have different needs. Every person may have different cash flows. Every person may have different mindset. And hence, when I'm talking about long-term investing as a good habit, the key is coming from our forefathers' teaching that part of the earning should always be invested. Investment also looks like Wealth management because when we talk about anything, the word could be wealth management. That means you manage your wealth. In 40 years of work experience and dealing with different kind of clients, having low wealth and having lesser wealth, I realize one thing that money making is difficult. Now it's not easy to make money. But then, retaining that money which is made or retaining wealth is more important and more difficult. Somebody asks you, if you already have wealth, then what is the problem? Why it is so difficult? A lot of factors which one talks about. So, I have tried to cover up some of the aspects that we need wealth protection against. Undue taxes, when you have wealth, when you have income, lot of taxes starts coming in. Income tax, earlier used to be wealth tax and estate duty tax. Fortunately, those two taxes are no more on the shoot book. But any time, whenever a need for money for the government comes, the first thing is, okay, tax more the people having money. That means tax the rich. So, you have to plan and you have to work in such a way that you don't pay undue taxes. Due taxes should always be paid because they help in the economic development of the country, which in terms help you also in promoting and increasing your wealth. Wealth management need to be even hand from the point of view of undue risks. Since one has wealth, generally the person gets careless. He thinks, oh, a lot of money, so it doesn't matter, I can take risks, I can spend the money, and he ends up sometimes losing the money. There are plenty of examples we have seen. In 10 to 15 years, people burnt 8 to 10,000 crores of rupees. 
so the kind of wealth they had or they have been inherited with they all got lost because of their not able to manage the risks ek puri kahawat hai ki grow hoga makhi aayengi so there are undue inducement so which starts coming when persons have wealth lot of people starts coming with ideas induce that spend your and your money in such and such place and hence it is very important to protect yourself from undue inducements inducement is another very important part in country like india rate of interest is high inflation has been ranging earlier sometime in 2000 and all it has been as high as 12 to 15 percent of it it is going around 4 to 5 percent that means every year your wealth if it is not earning anything your wealth getting reduced by 4 to 5 percent and learning the power of compounding any amount of money if not invested properly if not giving return better than inflation will soon or later will get wiped out hence it is very important that we must learn how to protect your wealth besides talking about long term investments what is needed for what it is for peace it is for meeting your requirement in the long run particularly after retirement in human psychology human life is life is subject to a life cycle in which after 55 60 the capability to work start reducing and sometime from 70 80 onwards it reduces further while medical expenses continues to grow and it is very important that when you are not able to work when you are not able to have that earning flow which has been keeping you alive from 3 to 55 60 years so you should keep some investments and saving in such a way that your retirement etc can be taken care of invest is needed even from succession planning point of view so that when you are linking things for your children and all because in india 99% of the people work for their children they have to save they try to secure their uh, seven generations at least and lot many times i said to some of my client please don't try to become a god then again an old saying comes poot saput to kya dhan sanche poot ka poot to kya dhan sanche but it's easy saying but finally everybody is for the wealth for their children and has when you look wealth for succession you should try to keep it simple don't make it complicated otherwise maybe the next generation may not be able to handle it and has it is very important to understand the importance and need of wealth management before i talk about long term investing i would like to touch upon some basic concepts which are important for investing first and very important subject is what wealth means to people now if you ask yourself a question what wealth means to you tell what people lambanis and all that have wealth in terms of multiple of lakhs and crores of crore what is the mean wealth for them now they have their own perspective i can't talk for them but some people i spoke to for some wealth means status some it means power some it means security a freedom now the people say that it gives me freedom freedom of what now sometime it can be reflected that it gives freedom to do what you want to do in your life everybody knows that life is of a limited duration that's the god has made you so you will do certain things in your life which because of your day to day needs family circumstances environment children's education 
medical needs, extra you are not able to do. But once you have wealth, you can do what you really want to do in your life. Maybe chati, maybe spiritualism, maybe further learning. In fact, a very apt quote I got uh, a year back, that there are a lot of people who go to college to create wealth. Because you go to college, create knowledge, and then ultimate objective is to create wealth. But then there are a lot of people who use their wealth to go to college. In other words, you already have good wealth, whether by of your own earning or inheritance. And you say, okay, I need to enhance my knowledge. I need to do spiritually or you, I need to know more about management. And I want to take a Harvard course or I want to take a leader course. Or so that's why there are a lot of people who use their wealth to build further knowledge. Hence, it is very important that you must think very careful what does wealth means to you. And then start working towards using your wealth for that purpose. We, in some of the base concept, one of the concept is of active income and passive income. As said, human cycle is subject to deterioration after a point of age. Hence, it is very important that we have passive income. Now, before I talk about passive income, let me give you the difference between active income and passive income. The difference between active income and passive income is that for active income is flowing from your actions, from your work. That means, if working, you are getting salary or you are doing business and you are getting profits, that's your active income. But passive income is something, you are doing anything, but still you are getting income. Now, think about old age. Your history teaches a lot. So, I try to understand how it used, this concept used to work. 100 years back, 500 years back, 1000 years back. We used to see there were kings, Raja Maharaja hote the. They were never working. But still they were making money. Because they had their investments in the form of villages, loans, places on which they were getting lagans or they were getting rental income. Similarly, jamidars hote the. Unke paas rental income aati thi, unke khet hote the. Dusse worker used to work on the field and they were getting the benefit of it. Now, this is passive income. So, we need to see that if you want to be really rich, there was a book by the name of my rich dad, my poor dad. And the concept of passive income is very well explained in that, that you can only be rich if you have good passive income. Otherwise, like Warren Buffet has said, that if you do not have passive income, you will keep on working till you die. In other words, you will only have active income. But if you have passive income, you can consider retiring honorably and still maintain the lifestyle you have been maintaining in the past when you had active income. Hence, please look at the concept of active income and passive income. Do some retrospection and introspection and see have you developed adequate passive income to meet your long term goals, be it retirement, be it children's education, be it their marriages, be it uh, further things. Hence, it is very important to understand the concept of active income and passive income before you think of investing. Another very important concept in investing is the risk reward relationship. When we talk about risk reward relationship, it basically reflects that reward is a reflection of the risks. More the risks, more the reward. Lesser the risks, lesser the rewards. Another concept which is very important is fear and greed. This is there in every human aspect. One gets scared very fast and one gets greedy very fast. One sees that my friend is making money, my other people, the whole world is making money, you say, okay, I will also make money. That's how when the peaks of the markets comes, the gullible investor starts coming and investing more because they see that everybody is making money. That's where one has to 
see and understand the concept of fear and greed from investors point of view like warren buffett says that you need to be fearful when the whole world is greedy while you need to be greedy when the whole world is fearful in other words when there is blood on the streets that's the time to invest and that time most of the people do not invest in fact they run away and sometimes they even liquidate their investments now there are some of the aspects which i'm again covering up in my next uh, point of basic concept which is the aspects of human being human being has certain behavioral aspects which are common in most of the people if people are able to overcome them they can become good investors one of the effect is being too conservative or becoming too aggressive this gain flows from the fear and greed concept when the whole markets are bad they become very conservative they okay let's not invest let's put money into virtually fixed deposits or uh, very safe investments even if there is no return or we are just meeting the inflation or we are not even meeting the inflation we have become very aggressive when we see everybody is making the money so most of the people invest when markets are very high when everybody has already made the money and i talk about those things that how market rational works has it is very important that you should have a balanced approach not very conservative approach and not a very aggressive approach another aspect of investing and human psychology is that any where you can verify the rates or where you can monitor your value of portfolio on a day to day basis you end up mon- monitoring them on a day to day basis although you may have invested for long term but you start looking and monitoring the things on a day to day basis it's very important like one buffet has said that more important quality for an investor is temperament and not intellect if temperament is that you can you need not watch on a day to day basis rather on a regular interval i am not said don't review your portfolio review them but don't do it on a day to day basis because on day to day basis things fluctuate another human aspect is that you invest long term you always i am a long term investor i want to invest for 3 years 5 years i don't need money for 5 years but start expecting results next day i recall 20 back sometime 2000 when the markets were at peak i went to one of my clients place and the guy there knew that i do investments he said meri bhi investment kara dijiye wahan suna hai market subah aao paise aur sham ko double ho jate hain nothing like that happens even if it happens it may be one out of a very rare case and it may be even doubling the money but yes there could be good returns in a week in a 10 days time but everybody can't do that and everybody should not expect that when we talk investing for long run objective should be that in a period of 1 2 5 years it should be able to give us a good return we should take care of inflation and plus gives a good value for your capital to so focus on too much on the current news Import, knowledge is important but seeing a situation see current situation does not mean that that will prevail throughout the life or will prevail in the long run events will come like if you talk about 2000 why to k was a big issue in 2008 a total meltdown because of the falling of lehman brothers economic crisis happened at that time it was looking like it's the end of the markets but it survived it grew it grew many fold after that and yes we should give importance to current issues but we should not give too much importance to current issues try to time the market most of the people try to time the market okay this is not the time, best time to buy i will buy at the lowest and i'll sell at the highest this never happens and if somebody says that he has done it i it is a fluke or he is lying because nobody can time the market in fact it has been said that time the market is more important than timing the market in other words 
I think that even if you have bought at the peak time, but you have given good time to your investments, it has given good returns in the long run. And that's the reason I am saying long term investing is a good habit. Not reviewing their investments periodically. Now, it's again one of the human psychology. Sometimes they say, okay, I have appointed a broker or I have appointed an advisor or my persons are looking after, so I don't need to look after my investments. It's like saying again, ki bina mare swarg nahi milta. Hence, you must create some mechanism by which periodically, maybe once in a quarter, once in six months, you must review your investments. Reviews help in bringing focus to yourself as well as to the people working with you on getting the results. Review, you need to see your investments are doing fine. Your investment objectives have not changed. If your obje investment objectives have changed, then you need to reschedule or give some redirection to your investment philosophy. And yes, reviewing is a very important part of investing. Before I come to the general perception of the people about stock market, here I am talking mainly about the stock market, I want to talk about one more thing as a big concept that perception that discipline is a very important part of investing. Discipline is important in every part of life, so is for investment and taking care of these general aspects are very, very important. Coming to the perception of people, see general perception of people, I have seen, I see when big leaders at certain platform talking about, oh, stock market, it's a speculator's den. Aap karte kya ho, kuch nahi hai, evaluation ka basis nahi hota. Ye market hai, operators hai, brokers hai, wo upar niche karte rehte hai, aur pahe banate hai. Investment ka matlab hai, insider information, agar aapke vas insider information hai, agar aap close to tips ya information ke base pe kaam karte hai, to aap paise bana sakte hai, nahi to aap paise nahi bana sakte hai. According to them, there is no rationale in the market for going up and down. My personal feeling and my knowledge of last 40 years is that markets have strong rationales. Market has a clear relationship between economic growth and growth in the market. In fact, global economy, cash flow in the market, specific sectors growth influenced by the government policies influenced by a sector's approach and specific information about the share are very, very important part to decide whether your investments will give good results or not. Hence, knowledge plays a very important role in investing. My view is, and it's not that simple that in one day you will get the knowledge or by hearing my lecture you can get that knowledge. It's a long process. You have to continuously keep on updating yourself on various aspects of markets, various aspects of economy, various aspects of companies. and But sooner or later, once you are equipped with all these things, you will find that there is rational and there is that will give you confidence of investing in the market. I have talked about different asset classes in my last speech and hence I will not cover up this at this juncture. But in principle, I can say only one thing that today for long term investing, there is not very many good options. To my mind, equity looks to be as a very good option for long-term investing, which could be through mutual funds or which could be through direct investment, provided you can cover your behavioral aspects, provided you create those adequate required knowledge. I have covered in my last conversation about importance of income tax. Income tax plays a very important role in deciding how to invest, where to invest. Because finally, there are certain incentives which have been provided by government for investing into capital market, into equity market. And hence, one should try to take those legal benefits which have been provided by the law. Our analysis reflects that equity is the best asset class for long term. We have seen that on year-on-year -year basis, you may have fluctuations in your investment returns when you invest in equity. But we have seen, if you look at 
5 year CAGR, 10 year CAGR, 15 year CAGR that you keep on investing into a specific fund or stock, a good stock for 5 or 10 year, 15 basis, you will constantly see that they have given good returns and they have given positive returns. And hence, it is very important to see. I am talking about the rationale for capital market or investing. The most important rationale for investing is that stock market grows sooner or later, maybe 5 years, 10 years blocks based on the growth of the country's GDP plus inflation minus dividends because finally the value of shares or companies gets reflected by the GDP growth. If we are convinced that our economy will grow at 6-7% per year, we are confident that inflation may remain 3-4% every year. We may consider a return of 10-12% per annum if we invest for 10-12 to 12 years period, 5-10 to 10 years period. Yes, it is very important that we understand this relationship and to explain the relationship I like to create one slide. This is on Nifty and sub indices. In this we have tried to give, if you look at the uh, monitor, we have tried to give individual years returns like in 2015-16 there was a Nifty has given a negative return of 8.9%. 1617, 1718, 1819, they have given positive returns of 18.5%, 10.2%, and 15%. 1920, they have again given a return of 26% minus. But 25th January 2021, that is 2021, January 21, it given a return of 65.6%. If you look at 5 year return on investment, compounded annual general growth rate of in investment, it is 13%. That means every year you have made 13% return. Yes, if you would have remained invested for 5 years, irrespective of the time when you have invested the money, 10 years it is 8.7%, 15 years it is 11.4%. Hence, if you remain invested for 15 years from equity, you would have got Nifty returns, Nifty index, you would have got 11.4% return. Similarly, we have talked about Nifty mid pack Bank Nifty, Nifty Pharma, Nifty FMCG and the result is the same that in individual years you may have fluctuations in your returns but in few years or long term basis the return had been virtually in double digit or so. It's making your inflation it's down and it's giving good return on your capital. Hence, similar exercise we have done for some specific blue chip sh shares and then we have done some specific thing for some funds. We have also looked at the rationale. Like 31st March 2000, Nifty was at 1528. We given a chart in which every year growth has been added to. From there you will see that today the index had been around 14,700 while our prediction from the factors which we have talked about is giving a index rate of 14,327. From the same chart, you will see that by 31st March 2032, we expect Nifty to go to around 48,000 or so. Now, if you can say to Nifty that, so you talk about projected levels which are growing, which is because of the power of compounding. Now, one way 2032, 10 years hence, we may have this kind of return. Come back to the original point, I only want to sum up by saying that investments in the market in the long run, equity is a good option, but you must control your behavioral aspect, you must create knowledge, and you must work in terms of knowing more and more. I have more slides further. But because of positive time, I am not talking about them. Maybe if you get an opportunity to give the lecture further, I may continue from this. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your time and uh, listening. Thank you.